The law of opposites. For someone to go from pain less to pain full, something must change physiologically. Are you listening to me? Amen. Something must change physiologically. Sin brought about physiological changes in human beings. In the ground, in the plants, in the animals, and in that part of creation made in God's image. You go to Genesis chapter 3, reading verse 7. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Verse 8, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Now we have spiritual changes that took place in mankind. Now they're running from God. This was the same God according to Genesis 2.19. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the earth, every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. When that happened, Adam did not run because sin had not corrupted his spiritual nature. Are you with me? So Adam's joy was to be in the fellowship and the presence of his maker. But because of sin, now Adam's desire is to avoid God. Something changed in the mind of Adam regarding God. And so when God brought the woman into the man, neither one of them ran. Adam didn't run. Eve didn't run. God performed the first wedding ceremony. With sin, they both ran. Something changed psychologically, spiritually. Something changed physically. Why? Adam didn't say sin, yes. Which means they violated what law? Ten Commandments, which we call the what kind of law? Moral. The moral law. But I want you to observe, if violating the moral law results in ill effects at every level of existence, the only conclusion we can draw is that God's moral law is at the foundation of all law. You didn't get it, I can see it. <laughs> Let me try to say it differently. Before God made trees, there was the moral law. Are you with me? Amen. If you really strain your mind and reason, there must have been a time when there was only Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Are you with me? Yeah. So there has always been righteousness. Because the law reflects the what? The character of God. There has always been the righteousness of the law. As long as there has been God and God has no beginning. At some point, God made something. And so the Bible says, He is before all things. Colossians chapter 1 verse 17. So at some point, it was only God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Us, the righteousness of God. Then God made angels. But the law was there before angels were there. The law as an expression of God's character. And so God's righteousness, which is expressed in the law, is foundational to every other system of law. There's God's moral law, the Ten Commandments. Laws of physics, laws of chemistry, laws of electromagnetism, whatever. All these laws have as their foundation God's moral law. Amen. And so we read in Christ the Triumphant, page 59, paragraph 3. This great law is the foundation of all laws to all nations and to all families. What a blessing from God that the law that is the foundation of the very universe, God has chosen to be the foundation of your home and mine. Now stretch your mind some more, let's think. 1227. If God's Ten Commandments, His moral law, are the foundation of all law, then anything in harmony with God's law is in harmony with the universe. Amen. As God intended it before sin. You know, these Eastern religions, they always try to put you in touch with the universe. I'm not speaking against them or for them. I'm simply speaking the reality. You know, you, you meditate and you 
get in touch with the universe. Or you sit in a certain position and you take a breath and hold it and uh, you get in touch with the universe. You want to get in touch with the universe? Obey God. Amen. Just like that. Give your life to God and God brings your life into harmony with the rhythm of the universe and the rhythm of the universe is the very righteousness of God. That's what the Bible says. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of His throne. The very foundation of God's throne, that which supports the throne of God, is righteousness. Remove that righteousness and what happens? The throne collapses. Which was the ambition of whom? Satan. Satan. From the very first beginning, of the great controversy in heaven, it was Satan's purpose to overthrow the law of God. Great controversy, page 582, paragraph 1. From the very beginning of the great controversy in heaven, this was his purpose. How do I take over from God? How do I topple his kingdom? I've got to topple the foundation. You don't topple a house by removing the roof. You topple a house by messing with the foundation. And so in Japan, when they build earthquake-proof buildings, most of the science and the energy and the expertise goes where? Foundations. foundations. Not the penthouse, the foundation. And so Jesus says, the Bible says to us in Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. Now, let's pause. What is it the law couldn't do because it was weak through the flesh? Understand me clearly. There's nothing weak about God's law. Amen. The Bible says the law is spiritual. The law is holy. The law is just. The law is good. The law is truth. The law is righteousness. The law is justice. There is nothing weak about those qualities. Yet the Bible says what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. It was weak through the flesh because there's nothing in the flesh that desires to obey God's law. I usually express it uh, by uh, holding onto a wire. You see this wire? You see this? Yeah. It's carrying power right here, am I right? Yeah. That's why when you use this, your voice is amplified. What's the power in here? Vitamin C? What's the power of this wire? Electrical power. Now, is there power in this wire, yes or no? Yes. 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 Why am I not affected? Why am I not affected? Insulation. Is the power strong? Yes. yes, it's in here. Yes, is it in here? Why is it not reaching me? Insulation. Now, what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, the flesh is insulation against the power of God's law in a person's life. Amen. And to show that the law isn't weak, God sent His Son. To show that the problem is not the law, it's the flesh, God sent His Son. Amen. His Son took the same flesh. Come on, somebody say Amen. amen. He took the same size shoe you and I wear, and He lived a life in conformity with God's law. Amen. As the pastor and I were saying this morning in his office. Let me say that again. Jesus took this. You see, sin puts you out of harmony with the entire universe. Because the universe is based on the law of righteousness. Sin is the opposite of that. Are you with me? Sin is the opposite of righteousness. And so sin puts us out of harmony with God's throne, with the angels, with those in unfallen worlds, with nature, with every aspect of creation. We are out of harmony because of sin. It causes us to be sick. Christ came in this flesh and he lived a life in perfect harmony with his Father's law. Amen. And he says to us, you see that? There's no need for you to live a life of sin. I have come to show you that despite the fact you were born with a backpack called sinful nature, 